But first, I'm going to chat with a good friend, a, uh, a guy I got to know, Rogers, in the immortal words of our good friend, Timmy B. I knew this guy way back when I called his games, Rogers. I called his games. He is John Anthony Anglin. He is uh, the new coach of the Bipsy Cavaliers back in his hometown of Shreveport, Bossier. Jay, what's up, my friend? Not much. Appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, happy to do it, man. Uh, so l- let's talk about uh, – We'll get to your past in a little bit, but let's talk about the present. Um, tell me about how this all came about. A good friend of mine, Chris Lovell, uh, who was my eighth grade coach back at Church League Basketball, and we lost by 98 in one game in AAU. I never let him forget it. <laughs> he moves on into East Texas. Um, tell me about how this went down. You were at, at with our good friend Mark Schlesinger down at UNO. How did this all work out that you ended up at Bipsy? Yeah, uh, he actually, uh, Coach Lovell gave me a call and and uh, and let me know that that he had accepted the job over at East Texas Baptist and and just kind of wanted to talk to me and see if if I'd have any interest in the job and and uh, obviously I I said absolutely and uh, kind of went through the process and talked to uh, John Rennie, our athletic director, and then uh, Karen Recchia and and eventually Dr. Bateman and. And uh, kind of pushed it through quick. It was unexpected, but it it was welcomed, and uh, I, I couldn't be more excited about it. Well, it's interesting because technically you're the interim head coach because of all the coronavirus stuff has kind of brought everything to a standstill. That will all be sort of worked out when you kind of get back to, to regular work. But I've got to imagine for you this is sort of an odd time. This is your first head coaching job. You get it. You're ready to hit the ground running, and it's in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, you know, kind of give me some idea of what it's been like trying to adjust to, you know, raring and roaring, ready to go. But at the same time, you kind of have to, to, you know, pull the reins a little bit while you're dealing with an unprecedented situation. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a crazy time. You know, uh, we're actually still down in, in New Orleans. Uh, I can't get in my old office to clean it out and I can't get into my new office up at Bepsi. So, uh, we've just kind of had to work the phones and, and finally got an assistant coach, uh, Casey Apetri hired and, and, uh, we've really hit the ground running and, and signed five guys so far. So it's, uh, it's been challenging, uh, you know, working from the house a little bit. I have to, have to kind of get out and drive and, and I'm, I, I use my car, you know, as my office. I'm actually looking at Lake Pontchartrain right now and, uh, watching the ships kind of roll in and roll out. And, and, uh, I usually try and, try and sit here in my car and make some phone calls and recruit a little bit and uh so it, it's it's been a strange time but but fortunate enough for me that that uh you know it happened and then uh, obviously with the experiences that i've had at different places uh, a lot of my work is done on the phones already so uh it's been a been a, been a pretty easy transition from that standpoint well i will tell you this jay you just made a friend when you dropped an otis redding line on uh on rogers hampton he <laughs> He certainly is now your I best you friend. I like that. Yeah, Rogers, Rogers is your best friend now, no doubt about it. Hey, um, what's what's recruiting like? Uh, you know, you, you mentioned I saw you signed a kid, and, you know, I know you're, you're having to still try to, to, to get a team put together. All the while, you can't, you know, you're stuck. Like you mentioned you're still in New Orleans. You can't really go visit kids right now. Uh, how do you go about putting a team together with with all of this going on? Yeah, so, you know, uh, before I took the job, uh, you know, the NCAA put limitations on, on the, on the recruiting period and, and we entered a dead period that I think was extended all the way through, uh, April 15th. And then that kind of trickled down all the way to the, the junior college ranks and it said everybody. So we can't face to face recruit. Uh, when I was at the University of New Orleans, we were going to have to sign several kids, uh, and not be able to bring them in on visits, you know, and, and so that's that's challenging, uh, I think, for for a lot of people right now. But uh, you know, I, I wish we could show uh, kids our campus just because of how beautiful I think it is, and and we're definitely one of the top top junior colleges in in the area for sure. And and uh, it's just been uh, you know trying to develop relationships with different coaches throughout the country. Uh, you know, in my time uh, in coaching and. And so I've kind of identified guys, uh, you know, that I was looking at here at the University of New Orleans and and, uh, and just followed up with different people and kind of trusting their opinions and, and taking a look on these at these kids, obviously, on their highlight videos, you know, and getting a chance to watch a few of them, uh, you know, play live games uh, on, on, on the computer. But uh, it, it's, it is uh, shaking things up quite a bit, but. We're doing the best we can with, with what we've got right now. Talking to John Anthony Anglin, the uh, new coach of the Bipsy Cavaliers. 
Uh, Jay, you were you was uh, was Chad or Kyle your coach at LSUS when you transferred? Was it Chad? So I actually played for both. Played for so, both. Okay. So Chad was yeah. Chad was the head coach, and, and Kyle was the assistant coach uh, there. In my would have been my junior year, so my first year at LSU Shreveport, and uh, got got a chance to play for both of them, and and had a lot of success there, and enjoyed my time there, and then eventually you know came back after. After Coach Floyd resigned at UTEP, uh, I was able to land back over at, at LSUS and, and help Kyle out when he's the head coach. You well, know? so and I and got I, a chance to. I, I kind of asked that question because for a guy as young as you are, what? How old are you now, J.A.? I'm 32. Okay, so you're 32. You've had a pretty interesting mix of coaching mentors already to be so young. Uh, you know, you go, you start with Mike McConaughey, who you played for. Uh, you know, who's a legend. You then go and you play for, for Chad and for Kyle, who are both fantastic in their own right. You go out and you're an assistant for Tim Floyd. Uh, then you're an assistant for Keith Richard. And then you're an assistant for Tim Floyd, again, higher on the, the totem pole. Then you go out and you're an assistant. You mentioned at LSUS. Then you go to UNO with Mark Schlesinger. I mean, you've had a, a pretty impressive roster of head coaches so far. I've got to imagine you that has to feel like a, a head start on a lot of y- other young coaches. Yeah, I, I've been really blessed. Uh, you know, I've worked for five different head coaches now uh, in my 10 years, and uh, I've, I've been able to learn and, and pick up different pieces from each one of them. You know, obviously, uh, Coach McCarthy was, was, has been a huge part of my life, uh, you know, not just in the basketball world, but he's, he's been kind of a father-like figure to me. Uh, you know, through, been throughout my, my career. And, and um, you know, he gave me the opportunity to play at Northwestern State. And um, I really enjoyed my time there. And then, and then you know, having played uh, for Chad was great as well. We, we won a lot of games and, and got to experience some championship basketball on a different level. And, and uh, you know, Coach Floyd is, is probably the guy that, uh, as far as my working uh, professionally, he's probably the guy that's had the most influence on me. Uh, he gave me an opportunity when I was 21 years old to, to jump right into the coaching business. Uh, he spent a lot of time with me, uh, whether it was just getting to sit in and listen to his recruiting calls or, or uh, sit down and watch film with him. I probably have spent uh, more time with him than, than a lot of coaches that have worked for him uh, got to. So uh, that was a huge, had a huge impact on my, on my professional career. And then obviously, you know, Coach Richard gave me the opportunity to be uh, the youngest assistant coach in the country at 23. Um, we had a lot of success there and went to back-to-back postseason play for the first time in, I think, 20 years and got all the way to the CBI finals my second year there. And, and then, uh, you know, Kyle giving me the chance to, to work back at LSUS was awesome. We had a great, great run there where we went to the Sweet 16. And then, you know, Coach Lessinger has been a part of my life, uh, you know, all the way back to seventh grade. I remember uh, going to those those – camps you know at northwestern mm-hmm. state when i was young and and uh got a chance to you know work out with him quite a bit and then uh he, you know he's he's always been in my life as far as you know giving me advice on different jobs and and uh has been there as, as far as you know helping me out uh along the way professionally and really really hate leaving him because uh this was a great spot and great uh Got a chance to work with some great coaches here, but but just couldn't couldn't turn it down to, to be a head coach in, in my community, you know? Yeah, and uh, I do have to tell one story on you. Uh, you are a Shreveport native. You were living in New Orleans, and, and, of course, I messed with you online about this. And then, of course, when I saw you when we, we came down to UNO, gave you a little grief about this. But how in the world are you in New Orleans and you're getting someone from Shreveport to send you a king cake during Mardi Gras season? How does that work, Jay? Please well, explain I'll this to me. Well, I'll tell you how it all came about. You know, we, we had our first child in December, mm-hmm. and so uh, I really I really didn't leave the house unless I was going to work. And uh, so I was trying to help out my wife as much as possible, uh, you know, back home. And so really, really my day was consumed by trying to come back home and take care of her or work at the office. So there wasn't a lot of takeout. There wasn't a lot of uh, king cakes or anything like that. It was basically just go to the grocery store and get what we need and come back. And, and so... Uh, Fortunately for us, we're good friends with the Louders there in Shreveport, mm-hmm. and uh, and so they they sent us a king cake, and and uh, that's kind of how all that came about. But uh, we since since you since you gave me a hard time about it, I was able to get out and try a couple king okay. cakes in town. You know? Good. 
Well, I, I feel better about that. I, I didn't. I didn't want you to go to New Orleans and then start sending out for a crawfish from you know Bunky or something or from you know somewhere in East <laughs> Texas. Hey, uh, talking to John yeah, Anthony. I did, Anglin, I, yep. Go ahead. I did get to sit down with Coach Bless and have some crawfish before all this stuff kind of happened. So uh, I didn't get to eat as much crawfish as I as I like to, you know, on a normal season. But mm-hmm. uh, we did get out and get get a chance to eat a couple different spots here as well. Well, that's good. That's uh, that's proper. Talking to John Anthony Anglin, the new coach of the Bipsy Cavaliers. All right, so. Uh, this is, you know, this is your first time being the boss, man. You you mentioned you've had a lot of uh, different people that you've you've been able to take pieces from, styles from. What is your style? What is what is John Anthony Anglin, uh, a John Anthony Anglin coach team look like? Well, you know, I think a lot of that will be determined on on the recruits that we signed. You know, uh, one thing that Coach Floyd always told me is you, you get the best possible players that you can get, and then you figure out your system and how you want to play after that. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, as far as style of play goes, um, you know, I, I enjoyed playing that up-tempo, fast pace that we played at Northwestern State and then kind of carried over to LSUS. And I think, I think kids enjoy playing that style. Uh, so we will, you know, Everybody talks about pushing tempo and playing fast, but, but you know, I, I like playing that way uh, as a player. And, and so we'll definitely have some of that, that in, instilled in, in our, our offense at, uh, at Bossier Parish. But, uh, you know, th- there's going to be a lot of different things that, that I've had experience uh, with over the last 10 years. And, you know, I'm certainly going to carry over a lot of, a lot of Coach Floyd's defensive stuff. I think, mm-hmm. you know, not a knock on any of the other coaches, but, I, I thought he was good as as anybody in the game as far as junking up a game and kind oh. of keeping the other coach. I guessing. mean, there's a reason, Jay. Uh, there's a reason why they they when you talk about Tim Floyd, the first thing a lot of people say is his junk defenses. I mean, it's you know he's he's legendary for them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you know he had a he had a great defensive background there working for for Coach Haskins uh, for nine years. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Uh, there'll be a lot of, a lot of stuff that I, that I take from him. You know, there were a lot of things that I, that I had forgotten about as a player, uh, that coach West kind of reminded me of here, you know? And, and so there'll be different drills and different philosophies that I kind of take from him. And then, I mean, it's, it's just going to be a mixture of, of, of everything that, that I've kind of had experience with over the last 10 years. So, but a lot of that will be determined on, on the players that we sign and, and the kids that we get in here. I will say, uh, Jay, just from your your the, the background of coaches that you've dealt with, and obviously we elucidated it just a little bit earlier, but just based on the background of coaches you've been around, I feel like you're a guy that can play almost any style you want to. Um, you know, M- McConaughey is and and Chad and Kyle are run and gun up and down the floor. Uh, Floyd is is obviously a very defensive oriented coach. Richard could always slow a game down and, and really muck it up and get it into the, you know, into the mud a little bit if he needed to, depending on what he wanted to play. I feel like you're going to have a lot of built-in versatility just because you've exposed yourself to a lot of different styles of coaching. Yeah. And, and you know, even with, with coach Richard, I always thought he was, he was one of the better offensive coaches mm-hmm. in our league, but, but those two years that, that I was at ULM with him. We were one of those years. We were top twenty-five in the country in defensive field goal percentage, and we ran a lot of zone defense and had great length on the backside. The two with uh, with two really quick athletic guards uh, at the top of that zone. So um, you know, there, there'll be a lot of different things that I take from from different coaches, and and uh, we'll just try and explore all options and not not really be closed minded and say, this is the way we're going to play. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll try and mix it up the best way we can. I do have to ask you though. Uh, I know you Jay and you're a very, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of a gentle guy. You're a, you're not, I don't want to say soft spoken, but you're, you know, you're not a boisterous guy. Um, you know, are you, are you going to, you going to roll around with a mouth like Mike McConaughey or are you going to roll around with a mouth like Keith Richard and Tim <laughs> Floyd? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, every coach is different. I, I would just tell you, it, it, it would probably be somewhere in between. Okay. Uh, you know, it, I, I'm, I, uh, you know, I, I'm not, not quite as good as, as Coach McCarthy about, uh, you know, as far as, as, as letting, let my, my mouth fly sometimes. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got a little bit, I'm a little let impa- less impatient than he is at times. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, it, it certainly is not going to be a, a berating or a demeaning type. You know, I, I consider myself to be a player's coach. I've always been a guy that's been tight with, with the kids no matter where I've been. So, uh, 
you know, I, I don't, I don't believe in berating kids. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that kids like to play that way. So, um, I'll definitely be probably more towards the, uh, more towards the coach McConaughey end in that aspect. But, you know, every coach is different and, yeah. and, uh, and everybody's got their ways of, of doing things. So that's not to knock one way or the other. It's just uh, kind of the way that I like it. You know? Do you, do you have a, uh, either a, you know, look, don't, don't bet in, in NCAA betting is wrong, but do you have any, like a meal on the first time you get teed up during a, as the head coach, you got to have, you know, someone go, okay, we're going to, is this going to be, you know, two games in, the whole season, you're not getting teed up. Do you, do you have a feeling for when this is how how, how boisterous and demonstrative you're going to be on the sideline when it comes to the officials? Well, you know, I I, I don't uh, I I don't I don't hope that I ever get teed up. You know, I only got one as a player in five years, so uh, you know they, the officials got to do their job, and and we'll do our job the best we can, and, and try and make it as fun as possible. And uh, I, I don't I don't really have a I have a betting line on on when it'll happen. I hope it never happens. So, hey, when did you get uh, teed up as really a player? I'll tell you about that. When What's did that? you When did you get teed up as a player? Well, at LSUS, I got one, uh, and, and it was rightfully so. Kerry sit and hit me with one. So, Kerry mm. uh, will. That was that was what. Yeah, that was deserved. So, well, even uh, if it wasn't deserved, Kerry might have given it to you anyway. He's he's not afraid. <laughs> he's not afraid to throw one down on you. Hey, uh, last yep. thing, Jay, do you have a timetable now for when you're going to be able to get back up here and, and kind of get things settled in, in Shreveport Bossier, or do you even know yet? Uh, it's kind of up in the air. You know, uh, they've, they've told me to work remotely, and they've been great with, with me and my family as far as that goes. And so, uh, you know, I think the city's on lockdown until May 19th, I believe. I don't know if the governor uh, put that as far as the, the state goes as well. I haven't been able to watch the news in the last couple of days, but uh, our campus is closed and we've gone all online this summer. So, mm-hmm. uh, I, I will get up there at some point, uh, I would imagine this summer, but, but there's not really a, a solid date right now. Well, I will say this, um, if, if nothing else, if you learn from Floyd and from McConaughey, take, uh, take note of their hair. Do not take note of Richard or Schlesinger's hair. Okay. <laughs> make sure you make sure you keep the hair of Floyd and McConaughey in mind when you go through your career. Yeah, I'll certainly keep that in mind. Hey, Jay, love you, brother. Congrats on the new gig, and uh, definitely looking forward to coming out and catching a few games. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, Patrick. All right, you got it.